Evaluating expressions is a topic we've already looked at in some previous sections. Uh, I would like to look at it again here uh, with an order of operations problem. So remember what we're doing is we're thinking of these letters here as kind of placeholders for um, numbers that we're going to put in and then they tell us what numbers to put in. So wherever we see an A we're going to put a 4, wherever we see B we'll put a 16, wherever we see C we'll get a 5 in there. And then also remember whenever letters um, or numbers are next to each other that's going to mean multiplication. So 4AC means 4 times A times C. So we need to keep that in mind. So I'm going to place 16 in for B. Put a little square there. Minus 4 times my A, which is 4, times my C, which is 5. And I'm putting parentheses to indicate that I want to multiply. I don't want to leave the parentheses off because if I just have 4, 4, 5, that would look like the number 445. But the parentheses tell me I'm multiplying these numbers together. And then 2 times 4 on bottom. So remember that this large division symbol is a grouping symbol in and of itself. It's saying do everything on top, do everything on bottom, and then when you're finished, divide the two. So on top, the first thing I need to do, of course, is exponents. Yes, there are some parentheses up here, but remember parentheses sometimes just indicate multiplication. If there's nothing to do inside the parentheses, then that's not uh, something we need to worry about. So we move on to exponents, which is the next um, priority in our order of operations. So I'll need to figure out what 16 squared is. And to do that, I think I want a little space for some scratch work. So 16 squared means 16 times itself. So I'll just multiply that out. So we get 256 for 16 squared. And then I rewrite everything else. That's very important. We don't want to lose track of where we're at in the problem. So we rewrite everything we haven't changed. And I'll go ahead and, since it's the only thing to do on bottom, 2 times 4 is 8. <clears throat> now in our next step, we can see we have subtraction and we have multiplication. Of course, multiplication comes first. I have um, two multiplication operations indicated there, so let's do one of them. So I have 256 minus 4 times 4 is 16. And again, I'm rewriting everything that I have not changed. Now in the next step, I want to go ahead and figure out what 16 times 5 is. Go to my scratch work area. I can't emphasize enough how helpful it is to have a scratch work area and then the main body of your work separated. Please do that. You're going to cut down on mistakes big time. So we have 256 minus 80 all over 8. I think I better do some vertical subtraction to figure out 256 minus 80. And we'll do some borrowing here. So you get 176 on top. And of course now all that's left is to divide 176 by 8. And let's see, 8 goes into 17 twice. And then 8 goes into 16 twice. And so we know that this is equal to 22.